It's Friday, March 6, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. An academic warns that Caribbean tourism will take a hit as the appetite for travel is severely dampened as the coronavirus continues to spread. So warns head of the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Studies, Salises, Dr. Don Marshall. He, however, suggests the country should find creative responses. He believes the airline industry will be forced, sooner rather than later, to slash airfares and in places like Barbados, hotels may have to slash their room rates in order to woo tourists to come. Dr. Marshall suggests the crisis will also disrupt international trade, and he predicts that tourism economies like Barbados will shrink, barring a dramatic turnaround in the spread of the disease. Two senior officials of the University of the West Indies Cafil campus warn that if careful consideration is not given to how several industries are being developed, they could end up competing for land space. This caution has come from Professor Wayne Hunt and Dr. Damien Quahall, who explained that as government sought to address the island's food security concerns through agriculture, expand the renewable energy industry, and develop a medical cannabis industry, it must address this challenge. Professor Hunt says careful consideration must therefore be given to how best the industries could coexist. We have a, a land-based constraint, right? Um, we are a small country um, and, um, and quite densely populated. So, so if, you, if your goal is renewable energy and you're thinking solar, that takes up space, right? Uh, if at the same time you want to be food secure, right, that takes up space, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so you've got agriculture in principle competing for space um, with, um, with energy. And then you also have um, the medicinal cannabis industry that we push in, right? That requires space, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so a, a lot of the thinking has to go towards um, how, how do we deal with that comp competition for space among key drivers, key policy drivers for the national development. Paul Hall, who is a senior lecturer in pharmacology and deputy dean of the Faculty of Medicine, also shared similar concerns, warning there were other issues, including climate change and its impact, that must be considered. Any industry going forward has to consider these two, at least these two important um, uh, factors or aspects going forward. Um, and uh, the industry has to be built out in such a way where um, you know, the, the use of land or agricultural land then doesn't become an issue because it creates a food security issue. Um, so working with the University of West Indies, there might be an opportunity to invest in research which would be able to create options. A prominent critic of the common entrance examination is urging authorities not to move too fast to abolish the test. Sandy Field Kelman, an early childhood education specialist, told Barbados today that while she does not think the exam will serve the country's needs in the future, the decision to abolish the test by next year may be a bit too rushed. Give people time to really let it sink in, discuss it, share it, understand and comprehend it, so that when the time comes, each person will be, hopefully, on the same page, singing the same song, because we don't want a situation where your child still ends up going to the school of the parent's choice, because maybe, if it's a private school, because you can afford it. And I still have to end up going to the school that in truth and in fact, I'm only going there because I fell through the cracks. I really do think we need at least two years, and maybe like 2023, we can come then and implement the other program. Phil Kelman said the elitist stigma attached to certain schools has to go for any new system to work. The idea of top schools, they have to get rid of that. Because I do not, mind you, I share the idea of schools of excellence. I believe also in schools of Variation. In other words, schools of performing arts, schools of agriculture, that type of thing. Yes, because you're always going to have your high flyers and your academics. All right? But I don't think that what we have now, the high flyers, I do not think the high flyer schools, that if that stays, what happens is those people still want their children to go to the Harrison Colleges, the Queen's Colleges, 
the large combo mayor, St. Michael's. I think it should be equal equality across the board. There's regional and international news after this short break. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Root Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume reveler, music, and more. It's Festive Friday. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. To regional news in Guyana, the envoys of the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, and the European Union warns the full Kong of Region 4's election results are not completed, and they question the credibility of the results released Tuesday by the Guyana Elections Commission. In a statement, the officials call on GCOM and all relevant actors to expeditiously complete the tabulation on the basis of the statement of polls. They also urge all Guyanese to remain calm and patient and for all leaders to exercise responsibility and restraint. Meanwhile, President Granger has been addressing his supporters while he stopped short of declaring victory. The atmosphere at the party headquarters was nonetheless jubilant. Yeah. 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 and AFC have come to tell you thanks. Further afield, a strict ban on the consumption and farming of wild animals is being rolled out across China in the wake of the Delhi coronavirus epidemic, which is believed to have started at a wildlife market in Wuhan. Although it is unclear which animal transferred the virus to humans, China has acknowledged it needs to bring its lucrative wildlife industry under control if it is to prevent another outbreak. In late February, China slapped a temporary ban on all farming and consumption of terrestrial wildlife of important ecological, scientific and social value, which is expected to be signed into law later this year. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. <laughs>